brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Jacob is in Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, Jacob. How are you? Doing well, sir. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hey, I was just calling because uh, obviously I, I enjoy listening to you and uh, respect your opinion. Thank you. But my fiance and I, we're looking to move from Fort Worth back to our home state of Minnesota. Cool. And so I was looking to get your opinion about kind of what to look for when buying our first home and um, looking at like a, a fixer upper versus a house that's already in like pristine shape. Uh, maybe in a growing market, our idea is that we're not going to be here forever or in that home. So we're looking to grow equity um, in the smartest way possible. Fiance. Did you say fiance? Yes, sir. Yeah, my fiance and I. Yeah. When are you getting married? Um, well, we keep pushing it off. We've been engaged for about two years, but we uh, originally from Minnesota. We moved down to Kansas City for two years, and then we moved to Fort Worth kind of on a whim. And then decided, so we're hoping to get married at the end of next year, but our goal is to buy a home first. Don't. Do not buy a home with someone you're not married to. You're going to get yourself into legal, relational, spiritual, and financial trouble. Don't do it. Don't do it. I talked to a gal, okay. a gal yesterday that called me. She had been living with a guy for eight years. They had two cars in their names, four credit cards in their names, and a house in their names, and he left. You know what she is? Screwed. She can't get. She can't sell any of it because he won't sign the titles to any of it. He won't pay the payments on any of it. So she's being forced into bankruptcy because of this right here. Don't do this. Go to see the preacher and get your butt married before you buy a house. Okay? Because you're going to get a mess, dude. You're going to get in a serious mess. Don't do that. I've been doing this 30 years. All I've heard is pain around this subject. No one ever gets blessed by what you're trying to do here. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Now, once you get up there and you're married, because you're going to go get married this weekend. Now and you, you know it's me. her. Y'all have been together two years. So I'm like, just get the yeah. license. You guys are married. You're acting like you're married. You're basically married. Yeah, paint her, get off the ladder. Yeah. You got this, Jacob. So, yeah. anyway. I, mean, I believe I in you. To, uh, I debated about that. Um, you know, part of it was going to get our license, like you, like you just said. And then all of, the other part of me was thinking about, like, it was her special day. So I kind of wanted everything to happen at once. Yeah. But our goal is to... This is our biggest investment, and we're not looking to, you know, a lot of people take out loans, and they have these uh, fancy weddings that cost so much money, but that's not really what we're looking for um, for the long game. But it is still her special day. Yeah, it is her special um, day, you, you so don't screw it up with buying a house before the special day, and then y'all have no special days. Definitely, definitely. Okay. So you recommend... Um, you know, like just going to get a simple license or, or, or I don't care. In the whole I mean, way. y'all figure it out, figure out what, you, what, well, the what, point her, is that what her special day looks like, but I would not put your name on a deed with someone that you are not married to. You're creating what your attorney would tell you is called a general partnership with no general partnership documents. And so I, and I've seen all kinds of horrible things happen to people in these situations. Some of them are just mean. Some of them are sad. But it just, it's a mess. I one guy, his fiance got killed now, and, and there was no will. She got killed in a car wreck. And now he owns a house with her mother. Talk about I awkward. That story. Yeah, talk about awkward. I that's a mess. Funny. So don't do that. Now, okay, now, so y'all figure out how, whether, you know, how you're going to get married. But before you're married, before you buy a house together, get married. Now, let's pretend you're married, and then we'll answer your question. If you're brand new married, I would not buy a fixer upper. Fixer-uppers are hard work. It's tough. It's distracting. I would want you to focus on each other and be in love instead of hanging curtains and, Tiling pe- a and peeling old old wallpaper Because, off. let me say this, it, it's, sa- it's romanticized on HGTV. It, uh, it, it feels like, oh, my gosh, we're going to fix this house up and get what we want, all of it. And it does end up being usually more expensive the time frame is longer. You're dealing with contractors. You're trying to, I mean, you, it's a second job is basically what that is. And, and so for you your live, first year of marriage, you, you live in that. dust, perpetual yeah. dust. It's it, dust it's not, it's all a, the it's time. Some people do it well, but it sounds a whole lot better than the actual reality of it. There, there, there's nothing good about it. I've renovated <laughs> one house while I lived in it. 
It's a disaster. I'm sitting yeah. in a lawn chair right. on plywood <laughs> floors because everything's ripped up watching the Super Bowl one time. I told Sharon, I said, you might be a redneck if you're sitting in your own house inside in, in a, a lawn way. chair on a plywood floor watching the Super Bowl. That's what renovating a house is. It ain't Chip and Joanna. I'm just telling you, nobody's hair is done. The makeup's not right. It's all bad. Okay. There's no reality in reality TV. HGTV has ruined your perception of this thing. So no, I would not do a fixer upper, not my first house. If you're going to do a fixer upper, don't live in it while you're doing it. Live somewhere else, fix it up over there, then move in it. If you want to do a, if you want to get a, some equity from some work being done, it can be a little, little bit of light work. Like We've got to do, we got to tear all the landscaping out. We've got to run a coat of paint through the thing. That's okay. But this idea we're going to knock down walls and, and, and you know, the decorator is going to prance through and tell you, uh, no, no. And the kitchens, no, you're killing me. No, don't, please don't Now, your don't expectation, do though, may have to lower that, depending on what you guys can afford, yeah. the, you know, that it won't be this top of the line either though right so like there's a le- there's a you're right a medium I, there of like yeah but, but that's a good be. point i i forget that these reality shows that aren't reality that have nothing to do with they're scripted as they can be um and the hilarious thing is people in the industry call them unscripted tv but they're about they're more scripted than a dadgum sitcom and then and they've romanticized it make make because yeah. you know between commercial breaks the whole thing gets done and, and it, no, it's eight months later and you're still sucking drywall dust while you're trying to sleep. You know, it's just, it's nasty. I grew up in the construction business. I've done probably 1500 rehabs in my life. I used to do it for a living. You don't want to do that. It's yeah. not, yeah. it's not what TV portrays it to be. You're right about that. I had thought, I had not thought about that part of the problem. It sounds dreamy and romantic. Yeah. It's not, it's not fun. Yeah. Um, I, I know it's shocking to you people, but those people on The Bachelor could have got a date without the TV show. It's shocking, I know. But, um, yeah, it's it's if they were really looking to not be a Bachelor, it probably could have worked it out. But um, so without any – anyway, so, yeah, that, that's funny. Ra- Rachel's favorite show. Is that your favorite show still? Uh, it's moved on to The Real Housewives. The so Real Housewives? We can, talk, we can talk reality TV another day, Dave. You uh, will not like my reality TV. No, people I don't like any reality TV. And the Kardashians' new season's out. You know? Oh, I love it. Gosh. I think it's all fantastic. You are so culturally relevant. I think I... That I am. <laughs> that I am. You kept mentioning Tiger King even like six months ago. I was like, oh, Dave, no one watches that anymore. No, I mean... That, that was a that COVID was, thing. That was a thing during get the you Fauci in the pandemic. End. But that's, hey, that's Love is Blind during the talks Fauci a pandemic. lot. We watched Tiger King. Yeah, but Love is Blind talks a lot about money. There's a lot of and conversations around it. None of it makes sense. Yeah. All right, no. there we go. <laughs> you never know. Uh, good luck, Jacob. I hope it works out for you, my brother. Uh, sorry you called in and got a speech, but I don't want I don't want bad things for you. I, w- I love monologue. you and I, w- I want you Jacob, to win. Jacob, you see how I feel growing up? Oh, yeah, that's, that's what that's I got. That's what Rachel got at the dinner table. In a table. living room. Still in counseling for it. This is The Ramsey Show.